On Monday, Josh Liebarger made his status. Case of the Mondays. Followed by a frowny face. It got one like and five comments, including dislike. Well, Josh, Geico also wants to make a comment to turn that emoji's frown upside down. In just 15 minutes, you could save hundreds of dollars on your car insurance by switching to Geico. With all that extra dough, why not give Monday a makeover? We see an office party in your future. Hosted by you. Hashtag happy face. Hashtag savings. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Put your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. Well, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game change. Donuts. If you wanna battle, with either that you will that you won't. You know, you're not a bad looking man, Mr. Gals. But you are, Blanche. You are in that chair. There's something wrong with us. Something very, very wrong with us. Hey, man. How about this? How about that? I go, hey, so there I am at the bank. Did you bring Bob Murphy? We'll do uh, that later. Bob Murphy. Yeah. Should we do like the JFK assassination? A tower, yeah. All right. High fly ready? ball deep to center field. Ready? Yeah, we're going. Hey, Harry Carey, two more stories, the podcast. Bob Murphy's joining me. Anthony Cumia, the batter. Ball, ball one. Look like a strike to me, Bob. Pleasure to be here. Wonderful seeing you again. This uh, word sponsored by Budweiser, the king of beers. It's the More Stories podcast. Me and Bob are going to be back later to do the JFK assassination. That one high and wide for ball two. Back to the left. <laughs> Anthony Cumia. Jay Moore. One of my oldest friends. Yes, uh, it's been a while. Formerly of the Opie and Anthony show. Formerly, I'm exiled uh, from on Main, on Main Street. From Main Street, you... Main Street, Main, mainstream type radio. I've been exiled. I am an outcast uh, from regular radio. From uh, yeah, no, I, I know. Gotta... I know the whole thing that went down. And of you were. Uh, you said you were attacked in Times Square by a woman. You called very her, assaulted. You said <laughs> was very angry. And then you called her a savage. And then people, yeah. uh, in my opinion, spun it into a, a racial thing. Yeah. Anybody that attacks somebody in this world is a savage. And for those of you people saying, "Hey, uh, why are you like making excuses for Anthony? Because you're friends? No, because I know the guy, and I know he's not a fucking racist. So suck Thank my you. balls." <laughs> So, and I had the, I thought, the best tweet of all your friends and supporters. Mm -hmm. I said, I think it said Anthony Cumia got fired for tweeting on his private time by a company, Sirius XM, that broadcasts pornography on its corporate time. Yeah, there you go. They do. They, they have uh, like a dick slurping channel. <laughs> they do have a dick slurping channel. Spice. Dick <laughs> slurp next. Two for Tuesday. <laughs> Two cocks. I think it's called that dick slurping, uh, the dick slurping channel. Yeah, they're, they're very hypocritical. But in this day and age, uh, I don't know many organizations that aren't completely hypocritical. You just, they, everyone wants to take this new imaginary moral high ground with everything. And then meanwhile, their business as usual is some of the most despicable uh, shit you'll ever see. Yeah, like if Howard Stern gets a woman come in and she takes off her clothes and she rides the Sibian machine until she squirts all over the place. <laughs> right. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And it's, first of all, it's satellite radio. So I thought, and I'm not saying this like just to curry favor with you because you and I know each other a long time. If I yeah. think you say something stupid, I'll tell you. Exactly. I thought the whole point of serious satellite XM radio was like finally like no rules, no commercials. Like I don't yeah. even know why there's – every once in a while they'll be like – you're listening to uh, hits on 80s. And I'm like, why are you even here? <laughs> yeah, what are you, 80s like this, on 8. Yeah, this could just be a, a computer. Do it. We don't need right, you, Adam right. Hunter. Beat it. <laughs> yeah. Those Dexys Midnight Runners, a lot more coming up. I'm okay. Adam Hunter, and here's a job that a computer could do. Next. Uh, yeah, I don't think we need somebody to tell us it was Dexys Midnight Runner. Uh, the, and, <laughs> who, and, and, who is this band? Who is this new, these new kids on the block? It's one of these uh, situations where it was sold to people as this amazing, uncensored, 
uh, forum. Finally, we can listen to something and don't have to worry about the FCC and uh, people that uh, have a problem. It's true freedom of speech. And go, nah, nah. It's supposed to be a pirate ship when it launched. Right, yeah. I remember the commercials was you could drive from Maine to Miami and never have to turn the channel. And I used to do a bit. I go, you know, thank God, because I make that drive all the time. <laughs> Maybe a weird, that's kind of a weird commercial. Right. From Portland, Maine to Portland, Oregon, for that matter, I, Lloyd. And you'll never have to reach for the knob. <laughs> it's deep tracks. Hi. When you're running dope down 95 to, from oh, Florida to. Jesus. <laughs> so you're in Times Square for the people that don't know it, because let's be honest, people brush you with a very broad stroke. You name Anthony Cumia, formerly of the OP and Anthony <sighs> show. They go, oh, that's that racist guy. Yeah, yeah. I've, You've become I've, like the poster child for uh, being a racist guy. Yeah, people will put that tag on me. Uh, I think once people hang out or do my show or listen for a little while, they realize it's a little more than that. I mean, anyone this day and age can get the racist tag put on them for this just disagreeing. This day and age. For just disagreeing with certain people's uh, ideology, you, you're automatically called a racist now, which really does undermine the true spirit of the word racist, which, you know, if you, if you look at civil, the civil rights movement uh, over the last 50 or so years, I think people using the word racist many years ago would be insulted that just a differ, uh, difference of opinion yeah. is now labeled racist when these people were, you know, burning down churches and, and killing children uh, as true racists. Uh, I think now it kind of waters down the whole thing, you know. So you're in Times Square. Tell yeah. everybody what happened. Well, I'm in Times Square. It, it was about uh, 3.34 A, uh, and I have an apartment in the city. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go out with my nice new Canon fucking camera and take some pictures of Manhattan, one of the most populated areas it's on like earth. A, all right, but that's like what a cokehead says. Yeah, I understand. And then, like then they go, meth it's, and you go, I'm going to go take it. Just fucking keep the shutter down the whole time, man. It just was something I wanted to do. I'm, yeah. I'm in New York. I keep very weird hours. You know, I sleep a lot during the day. I'm like a bat. Uh, so I figured I'd go outside and take some pictures because at that hour, it's one of the most populated areas of the world that doesn't have anyone in it. It's That's it's the lights are still on. It looks amazing. It's a it's a, a very rare occurrence that you're going to go out during the afternoon and get the empty l l site uh, down Broadway with all the lights on and everything. It just it's a cool picture. Yeah. So I started snapping pictures of everything. And there are pictures that I took that night that I put up of construction workers and uh, the the cops and uh, the Indian At and the uh, Cumia, <laughs> so C U M I D T. I just crushed a joke here. Sorry about no, that. Okay. I took the runway out. <laughs> <laughs> when you land that one again. Yeah, there you go. Uh, uh, at Anthony Cumia, C U M I A, and uh, Cumia yes. Show. He's got his own podcast. We're going to get to that later. So, yeah, yeah. So, and these pictures can be seen where? They're up on my Instagram. Okay. I took a, a bunch of pictures. And what's and the Instagram it, account number? It just, uh, that's name, uh, Anthony Cumia. You'll find okay. it that way. C U M I A. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they came out great, and I took a picture of some girls that were walking by, uh, uh, a few Asian girls from the back in their little tight dresses. Just looked great. It looks nice, especially with a good camera. I'm really talking in, in an artistic fashion, Jay, that the depth of field looks great. The lights look amazing. Framing. A little blurred in the background. Yeah. The framing is perfect. It looked really good. So I start taking a picture down some scaffolding. You know, scaffolding up in Manhattan all the time. And it makes a nice tunnel kind of look with the lights and everything. Yeah. And there was a uh, woman walking uh, away from me. And uh, she hears, you know, and the, the camera going off and turns around. She goes, uh-uh, no. Starts coming at me with her, <laughs> with her finger wagging at me. And she called me a white motherfucker and popped me in the face. She hit you. Close yeah, fist, hit me palm. right away. Bam. Open hand, closed fist. It was an open hand. Right. Open hand smack in the face. Pimp, pimp move. Yeah, yeah. Uh-oh. Definitely. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That, no, I'm doing the Asian ladies now. Oh, yeah. Oh, we don't mind. Take my photo. Yeah. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what it was. And then the black lady, she was like, she don't was they, like, don't take uh, my picture. Uh, bam, smacking me okay. around. I, I then go to, you know, I put my arm up because okay. I'm, I'm, I want to defend against any, any blows, but I'm not in any way uh, imaginable hitting her or anything. Right. And uh, then a couple of other dudes came out of the woodwork, and one of them goes, you don't touch that girl. 
and uh, I, I, I wasn't touching her. But, Suddenly, uh, you're a uh, minority here. Yes, I, I, I felt amongst, that way for a, minorities. for a bit. Yeah. But I, I then uttered one of the most embarrassing things I've ever said in my life, uh, borrowed sort of from a Platoon. I turned around and said, hey, this ain't your show. <laughs> it was at Barnes or Elias? Uh, Bar- no, no, the St. Church Joe Elias. <laughs> yeah, Barnes, I think, laid that one on Elias. She's a fucking human being, man! <laughs> yeah. So this is all... You and I have known each other a long time. Yeah, yeah. You're looking me in the eye, and you're telling me, hand to God, who you, I don't think you really believe in, because you went to the other side and came back, and there was nothing there. <laughs> you're telling me, in my eyes, this is absolutely what happened. This is absolutely what happened. Look, okay. I'll look you right in the eye. I'll look anyone. I got no reason not to believe my right, friend right. Anthony. When it, Cause you would tell me like, you know what? In all honesty, if I was fucking starting shit, but Jay, here's another thing. I'm not saying anything that's so outrageous. Well, hold on. I just saw a photo of one of these. Look at uh, that. That is a nice a, shot, right? It's a beautiful, that's good a job, beautiful Corey. picture. Uh, it's uh, Instagram.com slash a Kumia, a C U M I A. These are actually really nice photos. It nice looks like you're doing picture. a taxi driver, 2015. Exactly. Right. Look, the streets are wet. Looks she, good. She ordered apple pie with a slice of cheese. She could have had anything she wanted. <laughs> Oh, these are great photos, Anthony. Yeah, that's a no, good one. The photo that was the same of the night. Black woman punching you in the face. She's on there. She is on there Keep as she was wagging going. her finger in my face. Uh, but I'm so not other telling guys you. Come out to defend her. Yeah, you know, you're just defending yourself. But first of all, I'm not telling you something that's so outrageous that I would be lying about this. Like, oh, Jay. Oh, but yeah, that that guy should have been angry at taking that picture. Uh, it's not so outrageous. That this couldn't happen, that I would have to lie about this. I mean, I was snapping pictures. Obviously, there's pictures from that night, yeah. and that's what I was doing. And is it, is it so odd to believe that a woman would come up and, and just smack me in the face based on some of the stuff we've seen online? I no. mean, it, it, it does happen. So well, I've seen a video of a guy in a mall in Prague and somebody steals a purse and runs through the mall and in mid conversation does like a reverse head kick and takes the guy out. So, you know what Beautiful. I mean? Like there's not weird, weirder things have happened. Weirder things have happened. So, so yeah, this is what happened. Does the kerfuffle go with the lady or as my wife said, my wife said the word fracas, not a used enough fracas? anymore. Fracas. Not used a enough. fracas. No, not completely like a dying word. When yeah, you bring it, it back. is. How long was the fracas? Uh, it probably lasted lady? five minutes because really? I, That's a long I was. Time it is a long street. time because I'm looking around for a cop. Uh, I'm just I was going to wave down a car and say this fucking piece of shit, Bubba, something just to get it uh, on the record, I guess. Just and she, she goes, uh, I said, I'm I'm getting a cop, and she goes, You get a cop, I'll just tell him you were sexually harassing me. Like, oh, okay, that's that's where we're going with this. So we just traded some barbs back and forth. I called her a fucking, you know, a bitch, and uh, uh, I'll take pictures wherever I want, you fucking piece of shit, whatever. You know, like, oh, you got to start just fucking smacking me in the face. It just, you know, went back and forth like that until I was like, all right, fuck this. I'm, my apartment's two blocks away. I'm just going to go back to my apartment. So on the way back... I figured that was the best time, full of anger, piss, and vinegar, to start tweeting about what happened. You were walking and tweeting. I was walking and tweeting about what happened. And, you know, it's also a good time to throw in a little social commentary yeah. at the same, you know, while you're that pissed off and commenting Thanks, on. Thanks, Obama. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, whatever <laughs> it took. But I did jump to, uh, I, di- I did say some things that I think uh, were misconstrued as well, being the, racist. Well, the but, word savages people seem to latch on to in the Well, she media. was acting like a savage. I'm I mean, there's not, no way. I'm not disagreeing with you. you can't, and I would use that label for anybody that instantly just I've went seen from zero, zero to 100 uh, as far as violence goes. You know, that could have been a, hey, I don't want my picture taken. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. And I'm not being... For the listener, look, mm-hmm. I, I'm not being an Anthony Cumia and uh, uh, apologist. I, I have seen you call many white people savages oh, to yeah. their face in studio. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, what a fucking savage! You savage. You pulled me aside like during a commercial oh, break. Those goddamn Did you ru- see that guy? those those Russian pedal cab guys. They were all savages. 
They smell nice. It's a good thing you're behind them downwind. <laughs> it's, uh, it's nice no unemployment's at 13%, but everybody that comes over from fucking anything with an ear at the end of it, they got a job peddling you around Manhattan. No seatbelt, no problem. No. No, where you go? For you, good price. Just keep <laughs> peddling. Yeah, Quad, it's really good. Those Captain Quads. Where do you go? So who... Did you just like wake up the next day and go, uh oh? Like who picked up on it first? Yeah, I uh, I noticed some of the tweets. responses to the tweets I, I was getting, and that, it was see that's what you get in trouble for is yeah. someone will be like that n cunt. Yeah, like how about attach. I can say cunt and I can't say the other one? Right, that's, right. That's the world we live in. But then it's a tie, but it's tied to your account. Yeah, and I didn't dr- I didn't drop any n bombs or anything. It no. wasn't even like that. Savages I was just saying that's terrible. This and then I was talking about how there is this just uh, uh, there's a disproportionate number uh, of people just jumping to immediate violence uh, in the black community. I said that that was part of my social commentary. And it, it, like I said before, though, too, it was it's nothing that reverends, community leaders, activists haven't said. Also, we need a problem. There's a problem. We need in the uh, we need unity in the community. And this, that. I just like on the walk home, you thought you were talking to Don Lemon. I know. Well, you know what it is, Don. In the African American community, I don't know why I said that. Like Colin, all mm-hmm. right. <laughs> so you uh, you get fired. Yeah, yeah. I uh, a few days later, I guess Gawker got a hold of it, and you know anything out of context. Ah. And I'm thinking to myself, well, hold I, on. Uh, now I'll pay the other time. Uh-huh. What's out of context about it? They have the tweets in order. Yeah. You you explain in the first tweet what happened. Mm-hmm. So I don't know like what got pulled out. I in my opinion. Yeah. What I thought you got shafted for was using the word savages and then other people saying, like, that's your word for the N-word. Right, right, right. That's where I thought it was uncool because you and I, we hang out with the same black people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just the one. Anyway. Wait, just the one guy. Um, but, so no, I think that's where it got off key. So, like, I don't know how anything you, you could help me understand. Like, what got pulled out of context? Because it was all right there in Twitter form, well, this like, is, in order. This is what's happening these days with social media. Uh, what gets pulled out of context is things are left out. Things just get left out now. And then the new, uh, the, the new version is this with this completely removed. So what was taken out was the fact that moments before I was literally being assaulted in Times Square by this woman moments earlier. So when I called her a savage for, for just not even discussing the fact that she was upset that I was taking her picture and whatever, uh, she just immediately uh, started wrapping me in the face. Uh, that to me is savage behavior. Uh, it's not civilized. It's not being able to sit there and discuss a problem you have with somebody. Unless, of course, they start by punching you in the face. Then you act in kind. But So when people started retweeting this and commenting on my tweets, they left out the part. Oh, supposedly a girl was giving yeah. him a problem, it I said. I did read a lot so of So it was like, yeah, it turned into... I was just wandering the streets, pretty much doing upskirts with my iPhone, and a girl didn't like it. I dropped the end bomb and she punched me in the face, and I got everything I deserved. That was like what it turned into. Yeah. And, and it was nothing like that. Here's also, and there, I forget, there was a black person that came to your defense because you have a license to carry a firearm. Mm. You were armed when this happened. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, it was Penn Gillette. Penn did, right. It wasn't yeah. a black person, it was an atheist. It was Penn. It was Well, he, he's tall. He's a savage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Making that little silent man disappear every night, bringing him back. It's yeah. savage. Yeah. All savage right. behavior. He so Penn Gillette said you were like Gandhi. Right. Because you have a lot Anthony Cumia very fully licensed to carry I've been at restaurants with you and I've said, Let me see it. Yeah. And you show me the gun on your hip. So you're getting punched in the face, and guys are coming out of the woodwork. And yeah. uh, one thing you didn't do, it never dawned on you to reach for your sidearm. No. Because if I had a gun, I'd be like, you want, you want a little piece? You want some of this? Hey. It, hey, it, hey, piggy, piggy. <laughs> I'd be like Kevin Dillon. If, like, see that hey, fucking piggy, head, piggy. See that <laughs> fucking head come apart? Nice man. pig, yeah. Uh, no, I never felt like my life was being threatened at any moment. Yeah. It could, could it have escalated to where I would have felt my life was threatened? Yeah, hypothetically, who Maybe knows? Maybe if they didn't respond to your very To scary, my not fucking, it's not your show. Little they're like, people. whoa, let's back off. Woo. It's not your show. Loading. <laughs> 
It, yeah. So, uh, no, I never felt like my life was being threatened. And uh, you don't just pull those out to to wave it around to get people to back off or anything it's like that. It's also a felony. It's, it's brandishing. Uh, yeah, brandishing. Um, I didn't know that when you – I used to be a gun owner. And I was I said something like, I go out in my yard and I just show my gun. And then my friend said, uh, Billy Max, said, that's brandishment. That's a felony. I go, in my yard? If somebody's like – breaking into my house and I walk them out and they run away. And if I stand in my front yard and I hold up my uh, pistol, he goes that you're committing a felony. <laughs> oh Jesus. Like it's fucking crazy. Yeah. I think that I have a hard time with that one. You'd probably get off the hook for old time's sake. <laughs> yeah. Old time's sake. <laughs> for old time's sake. So you get fired from Sirius XM satellite. Radio. Yeah. They call you in. Hold on. Listen to these commercials real quick. Hey, man, if she tells you she does not want anything for Valentine's Day, what she means is please get me something, anything for Valentine's Day, and you better make it good. Show her you thought of something unique and different this year and get her the gift she is sure to love, Sherry's Berries, B-E-R-R-I-E-S. Listen to this, giant freshly dipped strawberries from Sherry's Berries. Starting at nineteen ninety nine, over a forty percent savings. Go to berries dot com. Click on the microphone and type in my code, M O H R more. Go to Sherry's Berries. Berries dot com. B E R R I E S dot com. Click on the microphone and type in my code more M O H R. If you do this, I'll get credit for it, and all the people at Sherry's Berries will say, "Wow." More Stories podcast listeners, that's a great place to advertise. Listen, here's the only way to get this amazing Valentine's Day deal. Giant, juicy, freshly dipped strawberries starting at nineteen ninety nine, Or you could double the berries for just 10 bucks. Visit berries.com, B-E-R-R-I-E-S, berries.com. Click on the microphone in the top right corner. Type in M-O-H-R, berries.com. Click on the microphone and enter my code MORE. Order today. Well, hello there. My name is Jay Moore. You know that. Cold weather is here. And for many of us, myself included, that means dry, itchy, winter skin. Instead of using the same old anti-itch products this winter, I want to challenge you to try something new. Try Calm. T-R-I-C-A-L-M. Try Calm. A recent clinical study showed that Try Calm is five times more effective at reducing itch than 1% hydrocortisone, which is a topical steroid. Tricom works on skin irritations like the dry, itchy skin people get during colder months without the unwanted side effects of steroids. Tricom has an itch-free guarantee. If you have dry, itchy winter skin like me, get a tube of Tricom for your medicine cabinet, your car, at your desk at work. It's guaranteed itch relief five Times more effective than hydrocortisone with none of the side effects of steroids. Find the white and blue box in the anti itch aisle at Walmart, Walgreens, and CBS Pharmacy. Try calm. Jay Moore here, and you guys hear me talking about razor blades and shaving and the blades that are the best, but you know what we don't talk about? Cremo. Cremo is the best thing you could put on your face before you shave. Look, shaving irritates your skin. It gives you nicks, bumps, razor burn. You probably blamed your razor. You thought about upgrading it every year with the latest gimmick. Maybe that would make your problems go away. But upgrading your razor usually just costs you more money. You know what you need to do? Upgrade your shave cream. Cremo shaving gels and foams are mostly air. Did you know that? Air is not a lubricant. This can cause irritation and discomfort. Cremo, C-R-E-M-O, is an impossibly slick foam-free shave cream and comes in a tube, not a can. Almost any razor will glide effortlessly comfortably over your sensitive skin with virtually no bumps or burn or irritation. Want a better shave? Try upgrading your shave cream. Get Cremo at Walmart, Target, Walgreens, CBS Pharmacy. Red cap, white tube, Cremo. So who who calls you in? Is it an email? Email seems to be the cuntiest way. <laughs> oh, yes. Like when somebody goes, hey, well, I have to work. You want to come up and see me for a second? Uh, yeah, but it wasn't even an email to, to tell me to, to meet somebody. It was an email telling me I was fired. Ooh, this is 10 cool. years with their organization. Um, and I got an email saying, yeah. Yeah, that you're you're done. Uh, there's nothing, no other recourse here. Uh, what was said was, and then you know a few words about how horrible what like I said who was. Protests 
Sirius Satellite XM Radio that like sponsors are no longer going to like what Adam and Eve are going to pull out. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it, it, you put this on your finger, it vibrates when you put on your partner's clit. Like we're not advertising that if that lunatic's in the building. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Like condom, these condoms <laughs> make her fucking heat it up. They, they never. Uh, that was the worst. They, <laughs> like these, these, these. What am I, Voss? <laughs> hey, like, let me know, tell condoms, you. Oh, they first get all of all, warm. the condoms get warm. You know what I was saying? Don't act like <laughs> okay. well, you think who you are now. <laughs> Sushi. Uh, sushi. So they, they, like, where was the pressure coming from? Nowhere. That's the part that really got me. There wasn't a bit of pressure coming from any organization. They weren't getting phone calls. They were reading Twitter and then people were, uh, you know, you get these scumbags that take the tweets and then email them to everybody, the CC'd all the bosses at Sirius XM, like, look what your fucking employee is saying. But no companies said, hey, it's going to be financially uh, you know, b- bad for you if you keep this guy uh, on board. They just fired me. And I have my theories, and other people do, a financial move. It was right before the contract negotiation. Uh, so I think they knew they could save some money. Um, make Jimmy and Opie happy by taking some of my money and sprinkling it around to them, but pocketing the the now lion's those, share of that. So those now, two, Opie and Jimmy took a lot of heat because a lot of people thought they should not have shown up for work Monday in right, support right. of you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, was yeah. it part? Did you have any conversations with Opie and Jimmy? Like you guys going in, or was it just understood? Uh, went and keep calm, carry on. No, I didn't take any. I, I didn't have any conversations with them. As a matter of fact, I did a little you with like Jimmy. Those motherfuckers, it's like those sons of bitches. Uh, look, as a person, I think anyone would want everyone to, you know, come to your aid. Uh, the cavalry is going to ride in. Oh, you uh, let Anthony go. This, this will not stand. We'll, uh, but I'm a realist here. I understand, you know, opie has got two kids and a yeah. wife and uh, lives in Manhattan. Jimmy, same thing. He, uh, Jimmy likes little kids. Jimmy loves wants, kids wants to make and one a wife. Manhattan. And, <laughs> and you know, he, he gets a lot of people going to his gigs because of the yeah. promotion on the radio show. So I'm not stupid. I understand they needed uh, to make a living. Um, uh, could there have been other ways? I'm not sure what they went through and what they did. Uh, to come to my defense. I just never talked to them about it. I never talked to them about uh, wh- who they talked to, what they said to the various bosses at Sirius XM. Um, but I would assume there were things that could have been done, whether they were done or not. I don't know. I just don't know. So, but I know they need to work. And just like that, I needed to work too. So that's why you went right into uh, the Kumia show. Had to be immediate, had and, to happen very quickly. And is it, uh, is it free? Is it by, do you pay a little bit a month? Please, free. Oh, what do I know? Free shmi. What do I know? No, I, free? <laughs> it's a, All right. I'll make a big deal out of it because I got the numbers wrong. It's a very... Um, Subscription-based uh, Yes, podcast. very reasonable $7 a month. Okay. So it's and, the Kumia Show, C-U-M-I-A mm-hmm. Show, uh, on Twitter, at Kumia yeah. Show. AnthonyKumia.com is where you can get it. That's where all, all the good stuff happens. That's and by it. the way, this is your second trip to California yes. in the last year, so I want to thank you for making me the ninth podcast visit. <laughs> no, that's not true. You really? Yes. I, I, you want to go down the goddamn list? I went on Joe Rogan's show. Rogan. Corolla. I haven't done Bill Corolla Burr. yet. You did them well. I didn't do Burr yet. Are you, excuse me, are you a podcast doctor? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happy to have you. <laughs> Um, it seems like you guys, I, I have very specific Opie and Anthony questions. Mm-hmm. It seems to me you guys used to battle with Howard all the time. Yeah. That's, that doesn't seem to me that you did. We did. Yeah. But it seems to me after you guys got paid after you did, and I'm a friend of the show for life. Like, and I always talk about you guys on this podcast. Yeah. Um, it seems to me you guys never realized that you had won. <laughs> Like you're making a lot of money, you're set up. Like the show's never going anywhere, unless Anthony does upskirts of black women and uh-huh, drops end bombs on the subway. Uh, and it seemed like there was always like shots across the bow, and it was on the same floor. Howard's on the uh-huh. same floor as you guys. So, a uh, is what I'm saying makes sense. Like you guys never understood like 
we've we've won. Like these are two. Like they operate over there. Are you too stupid to realize you've won? <laughs> <laughs> and we operate over here. The yeah. two are they are not mutually exclusive. It's uh-huh. the same company, but it always seemed to be Scuds sort of going o- one way only. Yeah, yeah. Um, True. Was it like a was it obsessive? What it was because I was always like. I never really wanted to hear when I was listening. Yep. I was like, fuck you guys like, stop, like just come back to the conversation. Like you're like, this is so much fun. Forget right. it. No need for it. I, I, I never thought there was any need to uh, continue battling with somebody that wasn't even battling with us anymore. I think mine and Opie's take on it were a lot different. Well, did America's got talent. Right? Mm. I used to have fun <laughs> doing like like goofing on Howard, just as I would with any other known I, personality. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like that in that aspect, that would still continue. You like know, I, do I, I would still do to that. Jim Rome, and people go like, "Why are you bashing Rome?" I go, "You know what? No one ever said why are you bashing Christopher Walken." Right, right, yeah. <laughs> it's just so you're you go, having fun with it. Why are you bashing? I, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's not. It wasn't a bash thing. It was kind of a fun thing. You know. Uh, but yeah, Opie, on the other hand, had a little more of a personal vendetta against him for various reasons, I guess. I, I think um, I think Opie perceived Howard's uh, uh, comments sometimes as being a little more um, personal than I ever did. So he seemed, would answer that like only, in kind. Only, and again, I've made my bed with you guys. Mm-hmm. You, we all know this is not a secret. And if oh, yeah. you listen to my podcast, I talk about you guys all the fucking time. But it seems like Howard was always firing back. I don't think Howard ever, like with Jonah Hill in studio, just took time out to like smash Opie and Anthony. No. It was always like he to hear and hear and hear and then finally go, the fuck's with these guys? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he would. He would, yeah. I don't know why. I, I always thought it was, uh, unless it was in fun or unless if Howard was in the news one day, because of uh, America's Got Talent or you know, a contract or you know, a house out in the Hamptons, just something in the news. I would talk about that like I would any other celebrity in the news. Um, I, I never really understood why after so many years we still had to say, oh, he's taking Fridays off. Oh, fuck him and this. His show sucks now. Baba Booey stinks and this and that. Like fa, that. Fa, I never understood that part of it. I... <laughs> I always liked those guys, and and in the in the mornings going up in the elevator it's weird and stuff. You see him in the hallway. You see him, and I was always like, hey. I give him a wave and how yeah. you doing? Fred's a great guy, uh, a lot of fun. Robin in the elevator. I would have little you know small talk, and it was never you know let me get on here now and beat the shit out of her. Right. Uh, so yeah, I you know you're never gonna you're never gonna make it sound like he didn't accomplish things yeah. and he wasn't good at what he did. So. When you talk about it in that way, I think you come off looking a little silly sometimes. So you can't do that with well, so someone you, that's you so were successful. Aware of it when it was happening. Well, oh yeah, I, yeah. I, okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, why would I spend seven dollars for the Kumia show uh, monthly? What What is it? It's live. Well, it is live. Break it down for me. Why it's is this the best? Absolutely live. It's uh, HD video too. It's not just oh, you know because I I said yeah. people don't uh, they can't just see me. Or, or hear me. I want them to see the amazingness that is me. Yeah. Can they smell you? <laughs> right. It, the thing is, with, with, a, uh, with just an audio medium, uh, there's so much going on now online uh, with the videos and, and uh, the news is right there in your face. And it doesn't make any sense unless there's video. People want to see what's happening. And w- toward the end of the time I was on ONA, we would play videos and describe them on the show. I remember. Uh, yeah. And it was very frustrating uh, to us and to the listener. Uh, so th- with this, I'm able to play the videos pause them, comment on them, take people's calls, Skype in interviews. Uh, It's just, uh, it adds a whole nother dimension to it. And unlike Sirius XM Satellite Radio, it is completely uncensored. At this point, to cancel me, it's going to need Colombians like at Tony Montana's house to take me off the air. It's my house. It's my facility. And you do it for, and your house is an actual compound. I've always wondered like, you know, the Kennedys had a compound. Some people yeah. have a con. Like, hey, Bill just Clinton, loved the word. <laughs> Bill Clinton it hurt his knee on Greg in Greg Norman's compound. Compound, yeah. Like, it is the separation between apartment, condo, house, 
mansion. Holy shit, this place is huge. Compound. Compound. Compounds like you might as well have a moat and like 18 Arabian horses yeah. eating bales of marijuana and then walking away slowly. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Also, a compound, I think, is something uh, where you're not quite sure what's going on in, in it. At any given moment, even if you're the I didn't owner, know she was home. Damn right, much. right. It's it's exactly all the way upstairs, counting a shoe collection. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? What did I know? You never know what's going on at the other end of the compound, and you know people show up, and you don't know why they're there. It's it's just, it conjures up a a great image. You have a good time at your house. Like I see pictures of you on Twitter yeah. with these like crazy pool parties. Yeah, the pool a lot parties. Of black people in that pool, Anthony. That's right. Well, Carlton's there. He's big, uh... big crazy racist Anthony. There's like 14 <laughs> people in the pool. 12 of them are black guys. <laughs> yeah, what the you hell? 12 black guys that could swim. First of all. <laughs> And they're all at your house in Long Island. Yes. All right. Where are they supposed to go? Why well, are you making a big deal out of it? <laughs> what, you want them Lake Ronkonkoma? <laughs> Lake Ronkonkoma. That's one of the best Colin Quinn words you uh, could ever use. When he called Almost. it the conch, like it was a resort. <laughs> oh, you never been to the conch? The I really con wanted to go Colin. I would say Patchogue. All right. <laughs> he always likes Eau Claire, Wisconsin as well. <laughs> Uh, 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 Colin, uh, funniest man. Alive. Oh, he is. Uh, but you do a lot of impressions too, and I don't think you get enough credit for it. And I, like you and I, did Bob. I, like I, it's weird because like the Opie and Anthony show. First of all, do you miss it? Uh, yeah, I talk about it all the time. Not so much on a day to day basis, but there are certain shows. Like the other day, I guess uh, uh, Voss, Bob Kelly, um, Colin Quinn. Um, who else was in that day? You know what, God, uh, just Jimmy in there. It, it's they just, were at your house? Uh, no, I wish. They were at the Owen J show, and I was um, like, God, I would have loved to have been there for that one. You know, and I've been there when I they have Bob. been there, you and know, it's Bobby just so much fun. Bobby and I were in fun. Denver at the same time. At the There's a Comedy Works, and there's another Comedy Works. Mm -hmm. And I was like, bro, we got to do, like, my I got all my stuff. Let's do the podcast. Fucking gave me the brush. Are you kidding? He goes, you know what, dude? I got an audition next week. I get, I'm like, bro, it's an hour. You're here for four you fucking days. That <laughs> snowman gave me the brush. What happened? He's perfect circles, his whole body. <laughs> like if you were learning to draw and you made like a circle for a head and a circle for a body and oh, circle hands. Oh, Bobby. And put little boots in the bottom. <laughs> it's Faleri's show. You got to gain weight. You know, you know what, dude? Everything, what I love about Bobby, Bobby <laughs> Kelly, at Robert Kelly. Is it Robert Kelly or Robert Kelly Live? I think Robert Kelly Live. You just Google search yeah. Bobby Kelly Comedian. Everything that he uh, says in the affirmative winds up with a cup of coffee in his hand. <laughs> you go like, how'd you like Space Mountain? You know what, dude? You wait in line, but when you get on there, it's worth it. You get off. You get your coffee. You get your coffee. Like, yeah. at, no matter what it is. How was the gangbang? It was good, bro. Some guy came on my neck. I got a coffee. <laughs> It's the worst Bobby impression ever. It's perfect, though, with the coffee, because uh, he does do that. And So you Voss, Colin Quinn, Bobby Kelly, and you go, shit. That's yeah, and I'm like, fuck, because I remember how much fun that shit was. And then certain guests would come in. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to sit and talk with uh, the Foo Fighters, because I never got to meet them. And they came in Why and shit. Why can't you crash? Ah. <sighs> They don't let me in the building. Are you really not allowed in the building? They put a fucking like a poster up of my face and said, this man is not allowed in. He is no, no longer really? an employee. Like in the lobby of the actual building. Well, what if your lawyer is on like the 15th floor? Yeah, I don't know. What Seriously? if I just want to go to the restaurant and get a sandwich? Hey, you know You're not what? allowed in a casino. You're <laughs> fucked up. You're on the list. <laughs> That prick made my money go to sleep. <laughs> He's a square. You can't treat him like that. He's a square. I made my money go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, it says. Fucking brilliant. I love I it. I lost touch. You're the one walking around like fucking John Barrymore with a cigarette holder in a fucking bathroom. I lost fucking touch. That prick made my money go to sleep. I'm going to knock you out. Uh, when you wake up right around the time you come out of your coma, I'm going to be at the end of your bed, and I'm going to fucking knock you out again. What are you doing? You can't talk to that guy like that. He's, by the way, Joe Pesci in Casino, Yeah. no one ever talks about the fact. Perfect Kansas City accent. That is a Kansas City accent. Perf huh? I am not doing it justice. Perfect. Kansas I thought it was accent. Baltimore at first. Oh, no. Because it's... The guy's back home, Dave. What the fuck did they care as long as they were earning? <laughs> earning. It's such a fucking... <laughs> Is that your favorite? What your Goodfellas is your favorite? Uh, you know what? Platoon. You Goodfellas. And I, you and I love the same one. It's the same one. Yeah. And and Casino over the years, Casino's definitely notched up. 
on Goodfellas, but I'm not sure if it's just that I've seen Goodfellas so many fucking times. James Woods takes me out of any movie. Does he? Yeah. Interesting. A little James Woodsy. But he's not such a big part in that where he should take... And then you, you probably appreciate when they beat the shit out of him then. Imagine if like Mark Ruffalo was old enough to have like done that part. Okay. I mean, you know, it's a big Take difference. out of it. What do you want to sponsor, Ginger? No, no one ever took me out of anything like... I was watching uh, a Band of Brothers, okay. which I thought was fantastic. HBO's miniseries yeah. on World War II, and it was fantastic. And then uh, they're in the mat- middle of the Battle of the Bulge, and artillery is going off, and they're running out of ammo, and they're freezing. And here comes the Jeep with the guy going, hey, you need some ammo? And it's Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> no. I shit you not. Really? I'm like, bap, gone. Gone, I am out of this. More than uh, Travolta and Thin Red Line. All right, that was pretty bad, too. You want to hear a great story? Because I had Dash, uh, <laughs> Dash Mihawk has been on. He's up there on the phone. Oh, yes. Uh, we're hugging up there. And he uh, he was Bunchy in uh, Ray Donovan. Uh-huh. So in Thin Red Line, they filmed, Terrence Malick filmed Thin Red Line where each guy in the cast was the actual star of the movie. That's why it took so fucking long. So like Ben Chaplin, there's a version where it's all Ben Chaplin. There's a version where it's all Sean Penn. There's a version where it's all Dash. Hmm. And they just, or um, Adrian Brody. But there was something about Jim Caviezel in the editing room. You couldn't take your fucking eyes off the guy. Because his story was going to be like, these two guys keep going AWOL and they don't give a fuck. Uh Uh-huh. You know, but he became the star of the movie. And when John Travolta goes up on the ship, he's got to go up there. Jesus Christ, Stavros, I need you to take that hell with Nick Nolte. (laughs) And Nick Nolte keeps getting passed over and passed over. And then Travolta comes and he's such a fucking clown uh, that Terrence Malick said, why don't we do really great? Why don't we do a take the whole scene, but no one talk, just use your hands. And then when you watch uh, Thin Red Line, the map's out on the bridge of that ship. Yeah. And it's just Travolta going, <laughs> like sliding his hands around. And then you can, and then they use the voice from the other take all the way to Guadalcalar. Like, like oh, just to make wow. him look more fucking stupid. And, they, and you watch it again. They keep cutting to Nick Nolte like, Jesus Christ, this is why I'm passed over. I have got to see this It's one now. of my all-time favorite movies. I love that fucking movie. <laughs> Um, Travolta can take out of a lot of movies. Oh, but, and and, and uh, by the way, the Band of Brothers thing that yeah. was that was after I was taken out in episode one. Wait, so Jimmy Fallon played a guy that showed up in a jeep. In a jeep to to drop off ammo to these soldiers that were like dying. In, was he in did, was he the holding in a laugh as he was dropping off the ammo? It was kind of like, hey, you need some ammo, guys. You know, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he can't contain his laughter. Uh, David Schwimmer was in the f- opening uh, episode. Oh, that'll take you. As like a lieutenant. And it just wasn't uh, washing. You know, it speaks a lot to like some guy's crazy fucking talent. Like George Clooney was in Thin Red Line. Mm-hmm. Woody Harrelson. Yeah. Like all, and at no point were you like, the fuck is he? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like they're so good just that so in the middle of a battle, Woody Harrelson and, yeah. goes, hey, do me a favor. And you're like, oh, what is it? It's like, yeah. What? <laughs> But then Travolta just comes up with that little like porn stash, and you're like, uh, "Oh no, it's John Travolta!" Oh, Ray Romano uh, was in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are some people that just uh, take you right out. I'm man. trying to think of who oh, takes you out of a movie funny. the most. Like there's there's people like when you see them in any movie, you're just like, "Oh my god!" Probably, I don't know. You're you know enjoying what I mean? it, and then I've learned that <sighs> I'm the white Ernie Hudson. You're the white Ernie Hudson. If Ernie Hudson's in a movie, it's not doing well. <laughs> Name and don't say Ghostbusters. Name and that is movie. A, yeah. Oh, I can't even name another one. I've done this on stage many, many, many times. Yeah. Eventually, somebody will go hand the rocks to cradle. Oh, hand and the I'll rocks go. To oh, I didn't know you were here. Because <laughs> I'm a hack. That's hilarious. My wife, she told me to say it. I can't That's take credit. Funny. She writes the fucking. Bits. I didn't know you were here. And and I go like, wow. Oh, and I do like a whole thing. You've seen me do stand up probably 20 oh, times. Oh, yeah. But now I talk a lot like I do Clint Eastwood stories, which I've done on the show. It's fantastic. Yeah. My problem was never booze or drugs. My problem was always P U S S Y. Yeah, you got to come see me do stand up if you want to hear the rest of that fucking story. But here's the uh, thing. Like, I really like, okay, I've worked with the biggest actors in the world mm-hmm. and the biggest failures they've ever done. Starts with Jerry Maguire. All systems go, right? 
And I will say this to my own credit. I'm the only, and you're the guest, so I want you to talk more. I'm the only guy that made a movie with Jennifer Anderson that actually made money. Every other guy, it's just like, here, we're crazy. It's oh. a mishap. I got to make believe I'm dating him, and she's dating the other guy at the <laughs> restaurant. We're, yes. I kicked him under the table, right, guys? <laughs> Uh, but then like Al Pacino I did But Jerry movie. Maguire was huge No I'm saying like That's how it started and Okay Jennifer Aniston And I thought literally like I'm name above the title Super movie star Because I'm an egomaniac Narcissist uh, this, this here, here you go Right Alcoholic at the time too And uh, Then Al Pacino And Eddie Murphy In the same summer Oh it's well. Pluto Nash And Simone Good luck finding that On Netflix Pluto that's on Netflix. Na- Simone Was Terrible yeah, it's awful. Oh, and you go, but Pluto Nash. There was an episode. There was a podcast. How did this get made? And they did Pluto Nash, oh. and I was so mad they didn't oh. ask me to be a part of it. Yeah, because I would have had great insight. Sure, it's like We're in okay, the goddamn first, thing. It's Eddie Murphy said, "Yeah, I'll do this right after the clumps." This mm-hmm. is before Eddie Murphy had eight bombs in a row. Right. And then I went in to meet because I read the script. I go. Wait, so like there's smugglers on the moon? I'm like, I'm confused. <laughs> and they go, well, they want you to meet the producer. I go, who's the producer? They go, Martin Bregman. I go, that sounds familiar. And I meet Martin Bregman fucking dog day afternoon. That Martin Bregman. Oh, fuck, really? Yeah, like okay. all the Martin Bregman movies. And he goes, look, it's, at, it's literally out of this world. It's Eddie Murphy. It's space. We put some comedy in it. Come on. You can't get, lose. You get to sing. You're going to play Sinatra in the future. And uh, look, we'll have a good time. That's what Martin Bregman told me. And I'm like, fuck yeah, bro. And then you're up in Montreal. Can't lose. Just don't forget about the 14-point spread. <laughs> <laughs> can't lose. Uh. Then two weeks into Montreal, you're going, wow, this is a really bad idea. Do you guys have pot? <laughs> Where's the camera truck? They always have pot. And then Simone oh, with, uh, shit. And then Simone with Al Pacino. Yeah. You go, well, Al Pacino's doing this. Oh, God, yeah. Like, I mean, so I, like that's, and then, but no, you can't. So I am the kiss of death. Oh, I, I, I can't agree with that. Uh, there are movies you've been in that are just fucking brilliant. Well, the brilliant and ones, nobody's seen. The best one is seeing <clears throat> other people, which I don't even think you saw. I didn't see that one. I'll write it down for you. you will, it's a couple that's about to get married, and then they realize they never like, Fucked a lot of people So they're like Let's just take some time We're still engaged Let's go out into the world And my oh, guy's wow. a, My guy's a TV writer So he fucks everything <laughs> And she just fucks the gardener Over and over and over And over and over And uh, then like The wheels fall off And get put back what together What an interesting and little concept It's great Because you realize like It's boring But boring is fucking great And <laughs> yeah, we fold yeah. our laundry And we watch reruns And that's happiness And what just happened Is fucking terrible Yeah that's yeah the best one Suicide Kings, though, that's fucking of giant. Course. That was a good movie. That is How a... come he was never on Opie and Anthony, I Christopher know. Walken? I would have loved to have him How, on. Why didn't Kevin Pollack do, op- uh, do Christopher Walken with me when we were there together? Remember? Right? Yeah. Do you remember that? I do remember that. I we wasn't, were like, you know. We were begging. <sighs> why? I think he thought, and you can correct me on this, there seems to be a perception... That I am a very uh, aggro motherfucker that likes to keep score. Yeah, and you know me very well. Mm-hmm. I don't. I get along with everybody. Yeah, I, I want to help people. And if I want Kevin Pollock to do walking, it's because I want to play. Right, have fun. Yeah, like, I don't want to go like <clears throat> fuck. Yeah, mine's so much better than yours, and you're fucking. Fa-. And by the way, his is better than mine. He uh, does a great way. He's a great impressionist. I am on the record as saying. His walking is better than mine because the the talk and walking podcast he does. Uh-huh. There was a sound fuck up in episode one. Episode two starts with him as walking, explaining what happened, and he's speaking. He's just alone in his house. It's fucking. It sounds you, like it's, it's walking. Doing it's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because be- I'm doing like the impression of the impression. You ever think though? Sometimes somebody because there have been days Sorry, where someone goes. Sorry, we're out of time, goes, Anthony. Someone, oh, it's the corporate shit. clock. Eight seven seven ninety nine on Fox. J- oh no, this isn't my radio show. It's my podcast. No. Go on. I'm sorry, honey. Go ahead. There, <laughs> there's sometimes when somebody goes, "Hey, do that. Do that impression." And some days you jump right into it, and most days, and it's fun and everything. And some days you're just like, "Nah, I don't want to." The only time it bothers me is at a meet it. and greet after a show. Yeah, do, do an, that. You do an hour and a half. 
and at a theater, no opening act. You're yeah, sweating yeah. your cock off. There's a lot. The meet and greet is an hour and a half because yeah. everybody like I'll stay because I want to sell T-shirts and sure. stuff. T-shirts are available at jmore.com. <laughs> and then somebody comes up and goes, "No alternative lifestyle, droopy dog, huh?" Uh, like something really tiny, right, like, right, and that's just gay droopy dog. Like, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say club soda candy was going to be bottomless? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, Remember bang bus? I do. I love it. Uh, so, yeah, when uh, people ask me, like, how can you didn't do blank after an hour and a half? It, yeah. A part of me dies. Like, do you know how hard I just worked? Yeah. Like, because I put it, I leave it on the field, man. I put it all out there. And, put it all out yeah, there. I can't do it all. In one night, anytime, any place. We drive any nights, place. weekends, anytime, any place. Uptown, Harlem, anytime, <laughs> any place. How'd you driving record? Clean, <laughs> like my conscience. Like my conscience. Are you gonna break my chops? Because if you are, you can take it right under the arches. No, I'm not gonna break your chops. It says here, you in the army. Oh no, kidding! God damn, Jay. No, I don't know. I just. It's fucking... amazing. Those are the days. That's taxi. Driver. Oh, of course. I'm just waiting for the senator. I'm waiting for the sun to shine. <laughs> It took me like six viewings. This is like being back on ONA. It's ADD, and you haven't even said anything. No, I Fuck. love it. Fucking say stuff. I've, I've said a few things. Who's your favorite guest? Uh, like, who's a guest you had on the uh, Anthony Cumia uh, podcast, which is like seven bucks a month, and I highly recommend it because Anthony Cumia is a friend of mine, and I know he wants to entertain you very much. True, him. open, and honest uh, dialogue. Anybody wants yeah. to call in. We have people call in. They want whatever they want to talk about, whatever context. There's no there's no ban on words or opinions. You know, whatever. Is Keith the cop booking your show? Uh, Keith is indeed. He has you. some help. That might hamstring you a little bit. But he's uh, well. You know he what? I was wondering if you were available in February. <laughs> I think next week we have the uh, SWAT team uh, from. Yeah, you know what? That's not a bad guest, honestly. <laughs> it, it is. It. You can car. believe what you want about it. I've seen I'm a Navy SEAL, a fighter, a governor. He obviously was, it was, it was the harp system and mind control. You've had him on your it, show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How Jesse. crazy is the governor? Jesse, the body slash mind, is batshit crazy. Is that a bad thing in politics? Ah, I mean, they're all psychopaths. If you read like John Ronson's like the psychopath test, you yeah. go, wow, these guys are all like really, really, really cra like serial killers and politicians. Yeah, yeah. It's the same check. You're checking the same box. I think you're right. Mentally. But here's the weird thing with Jesse. He was, you know, the wrestler for a while. Jesse, the body, the feather boas, the friggin' hair. The, yeah, you yeah. Know, all that. Yeah, the boa. A boa. Like a fornoic, right? <laughs> What is he, a gay? What are you, a fagatito? <laughs> Gee, look at him with the tights. He's got a heart on. <laughs> where'd, Bob Mur where'd Bob Murphy go? <laughs> with the get off the roof. Sorry. <laughs> and, and then he becomes a governor. Yeah. And he, he shaved his head. He put on the suit. He had the little mustache. He looked the part. And, and, and it was like, wow, I guess that was an act. You know, that crazy wrestler guy. And then the second he's out of office, he grows the riffraff skullet, <laughs> the friggin' beard, and, and becomes even nuttier than he was. So he, like, time out. He took a little time out uh, while he was governor to kind of not be as crazy. Um, so I think he really is nuts. Uh, well, he's a big conspiracy guy. Like he thinks nine oh, eleven's yeah. an inside job. Oh yeah, all of those things. Like nobody landed on the moon. We his did on the soundstage in Tempe. <laughs> his <laughs> show that how, conspiracy. How could the government keep a fucking secret? Like <laughs> yeah. John Stewart just once said, like Dick Morris couldn't get his toe sucked in Jakarta without right. it being in the New York <laughs> without I, people like, knowing. We could fake a fucking moon landing. Oh. <laughs> They uh, uh, Disney helped them, and in turn, they gave them land in Florida. You might have heard it, Disney World. How great would it be if he showed up as governor and he never took off the bow and the tights? If he was just like Ric Flair? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Woo! Limousine driving, airplane flying, governor of Florida. Uh, Woo! That would be great. Other governors talk, and he just comes in from the side of the screen with a flying elbow. Fucking Randy Orton. <laughs> uh, that'd be fantastic. You fucking bunch of dope. He Who the fuck would want that job? <laughs> I want to uh, run Minnesota. Minnesota of like, all places. And, uh, yeah, like that's the state that you need to make better. Yeah, yeah, and that's the one that's going to catapult you into other forms of there, government. Yeah, yeah. 
And we all know. Yeah, you know what? Oh, really? I was, I, when I was on Saturday Night Live, I looked up at the big board of potential guests. And I go, I knew who she was. I just couldn't place it. And I go, who's Emma Thompson? Uh -oh. And Al Franken had a pencil, always had a pencil in his mouth, like fucking disgusting with those big giant <laughs> lips. <laughs> you know what I mean? He had those yes. huge like, Andy Pettit lips. Like, ugh. And, you know, he's had a pencil in his mouth and he took it out and he threw it. He goes, are you fucking kidding me? She got nominated for an Academy Award. Ugh. She got nominated. And then he went to put another pencil in his mouth, threw that one, and then he went to walk away. And I go, whoa, whoa, before you go. And he goes, what? I go, who are smashing pumpkins? And he goes, I don't know, but they didn't get nominated for a fucking All right, Academy good. Award. Pick up your saliva-covered pencils, oh, disgusting. you creep. And now he's goddamn uh, Senator Al Franken. Yeah, he's not very well-liked. Well he's not? No. He goes against Obama. He speaks his mind. He does Yeah, he does. He, but he, he came in all full of uh, energy for Obama there. He's quite a liberal agenda, but, you know, whatever. I was watching an SNL uh, show that they had on last just last night, and it was... Uh, Pretty funny watching people go through the years. You know those interview shows they do, and then they they break every so often by showing a band that was on. Dun, dun, dun. You ever see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been you've been on, mm -hmm. haven't you done one of those? I, I know. I saw your face when you were doing the uh, the you know, bye bye I... sketch. Bye bye, the bye bye sketch with oh, Spade. A classic. Hey, Sarah Silverman has, has hair under her arms. It must be a classic. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Uh, bye bye. In the sketch she did. I mean, not really right. Well. I'll of, never bad mouth course, another comic. Of course. Um, which state would you want to be governor of? Oh man, I you know as far as I think uh, helping out uh, my fellow New Yorkers, I would say New York. Uh, Cuomo's a but little too. It's, it's all you. You're not a big Cuomo guy. I like Cuomo because we talked about this off mic. Cuomo, like three weeks in, just showed up, dropped a like paper on the desk, and went, "There's the budget, perfect." Yeah. And it was everybody was like, "Jesus Christ!" Yeah, I think, yeah. I think Sandra Lee did it. <laughs> it was we were making pumpkin pie with saffron. You know, <laughs> she did it. You ever see her without a top on? She got hangers. <laughs> They're hang low hangers. I think uh, Cuomo, I, come on. <laughs> you don't give a fuck. <laughs> he, I, I don't like stuff like that is great. You know, get the budget done, do what the politicians are supposed to do and stuff. But then when, you know, at, at midnight one, I'm good with water at midnight one uh, uh, day when uh, he just decides to pencil in uh, this gun legislation, that means nothing. Like, that just means nothing as far as helping out uh, uh, crime or mass shootings or anything. It's just that kind of let me advance my political career, which I can't even fault him with. But how but does that advance? It, is, I'll take it both ways because one of my favorites— Because it's a liberal I, state. Okay. But I love I, – well, not upstate. Not no, not upstate, but that doesn't matter to the fucking people. That's what's weird about people. New York. It's, people don't realize, like, they just think New York, they think Manhattan, Long Island. Yes. And then there is a six-hour drive in any direction where it's all Republican. Yeah, but, but that they live doesn't seem to matter. Miles, but they live 18 miles apart. Yeah, yeah. And But New York you know, you goes – You get those Puerto Ricans in the Bronx in your but, pocket, forget about the it. The state goes over. to Democrats all the time, so it doesn't even matter. It's uh, – yeah. But when he did that, and it's like, oh, on the heels of – the uh, you know horrible shooting in Connecticut, and then uh, obviously was it like to like tamper down the guns? Yeah, stuff? it's like, like oh these are assault rights? weapons are terrible. We want to ban that. And then you gotta let me ask you a question: Why yeah. does that bother you? you Why know, does it bother you me? You are a gun enthusiast. Yeah, I really on am. The highest level. Yeah, yeah. Like I understand the gun, and I've been a gun owner in my life mm -hmm. a few times. Yeah. When I had kids, I'm like, eh, I'll fuck this up somehow. <laughs> My kid will be <laughs> hopping around like spider. My yes. fucking bones all shattered. What do you want? I'm a fucking good shot. When you're, the, when you're in the crib, I'm a good shot, you prick. <laughs> uh, like, what? Like, so the guy passes this thing with like assault uh, yeah. rifles. Assault weapons. All right. Ooh, but like, in your mind, mm -hmm. why can't your default switch be like, you know what? He's just fucking throwing a bone. I still get to keep all my guns. Like, they're not taking anything out of your house. What the fuck do you care? Not necessarily. No, they're not. No, they're not. They, they want me to register oh, now all of my guns. And Impeachment. they are taking away well, my, bad? my 30 round mags. They're taking away those. Now I got to. you attacked by fucking ISIS get, in Long Island? Let me tell you round something. Mags. 30 what round when if, if you get. Literally. If, you, if General Hef, but, but this is what people don't understand. Civil War references. If you get three people coming in your fucking door. 
to, to rob your house. You lower your fucking voice right now, first of all. <laughs> oh, go ahead. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm not saying this happens uh, all the time, but I'm just saying it's my choice to want to defend my house With and my, many bullets myself as you and want. my life la- how I want uh, legally. Uh, and, and then to take that away from me because why? Some people are crazy. Yeah, that's the fucking country we live in. No, I want to know that I can defend it. myself to the best of my ability with what's available to the general population. 57 Magnum rubber grip, four inches. It's great. What's, what's better? Than Fantastic what's gun. Better, what's better? Go ahead. Go get one in New York City. Oh, that's right. You can't. Why well, can't I see? I don't know any of this. No, I know. It's terrible. But then how it's do you a have terrible... 44 fucking assault rifles? <laughs> if you can't wait, I, I'm confused. But here's now. another aspect oh, no, of it. I'm confused. You can't get a 357 Magnum in Manhattan? Not in New York City, no, no. You can't even get an assault rifle what in New York Long City. Island? And Long Island, you can, but it's going to take you probably a year to from the time you don't have the ability to buy a pistol to the time you can buy one and can buy that. It's going to take you okay. a while. Now, you know me. I'm mm-hmm. not, I would never legitimize either party with my affiliation. Of course. There's 12 signs of the Zodiac. When was the last time your fucking horoscope was right? Mm-hmm. So there's no way these two parties could possibly fucking represent <laughs> the matrix of my fucking brain. I agree with you. And my community and where my parents live and the mm-hmm. whole thing. So Andrew Cuomo does this weird thing with assault rifles. Yeah. He gives you a fucking red ass, okay? Yeah. My guy, Chris Christie, who I really fucking love, just refuses to fucking acknowledge. He finally did. Finally caved in. But for most of his governorship of New Jersey... Nope, voted no for gay marriage. Voted right, and that rubbed me the wrong way. But that's like human beings. You're talking about like an 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 object. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. And you're like, well, I'll, I'll have to register it. But with Chris Christie, I knew he was <clears> throwing <throat> the far right GOP a bone to further pave his way to New Hampshire and yeah, Iowa. I understand, and I understood the game. Uh, but you're sitting here but like it's not just a fucking, mechanism. You're like fucking thing. Cuomo. I didn't like the fact that put a he's, sticker on my gun now. That he's telling me how I should best defend my house against people that will have better weapons than the legal gun owners because they don't have to pay attention to the laws. So why can't I use the weapons that are uh, that can defend me to the best of my ability? Uh, why do I have to? Uh, have a government agency tell me what they think is uh, what what I should use. Look, I, I, we I don't both like know that. the gun lobby is not going anywhere. <clears throat> yeah, I know that. We both know there's never like you could pry this gun out of my dead hand. We both know your guns are never leaving your house. There will unless the apocalypse comes and we're collecting guns because the fucking Canadians inv- uh, invaded Detroit and Albany <laughs> and Buffalo, and we're like, holy shit! Anybody got any extra rounds? <laughs> you you know that, yeah. But it's it's a small it's a slow process of taking your gun. Try to get you're you can't too, buy too, an assault are, weapon in New York. Too smart to you, really think this. But you can't you buy too, what they call an assault weapon in New York. And that, by the way, fuck wants an assault weapon. You want a gun that takes more than a, a one round at a time. You know, what do you get? A, lever action? Who are you? Fucking the guy uh, from Big Valley? What, it, it's it's what, it's all they sell in gun stores in New York now. By the what way. In a uh, lever, lever action <laughs> fucking <laughs> I hear something The rifleman <laughs> Chuck Connors <laughs> Chuck Connors Everyone's Chuck Connors now so And meanwhile what? the people that are trying to do you harm Have Kalashnikovs And uh, you know I gotta all sit right. there First of all I like in your world That anybody coming onto your property in Long Island Is a Somalian pirate I, I understand And not like just some guy coked out like Maybe we That's get off true. the fence and maybe go in the pool to That's pool true. off That's true I understand but you know, you're too smart. Even Anthony. two guys wanting you're, to do your 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 home or person damage uh, yeah. can do a lot of things uh, if you're not equipped right. with the right armaments. But you're very intelligent, and I don't. I said that you are very intelligent. You, you goddamn right. They're taking your guns. <laughs> They're never going to take your fucking guns. The gun line. You. I will why, never say never. On why that. don't you have longer vision? Mm-hmm. And realize that the gun lobby and the people that make gunpowder and bullets—it's like bombs. We like George Carlin. If you got a country filled with brown people, we're gonna bomb the shit out of them because we need practice. <laughs> Same thing with guns. Have the long vision. Let Andrew Cuomo sign this stupid fucking piece of paper that's not gonna matter in ten years anyway. And that's mm-hmm. like you're too smart to get that upset about something like well, that. Well, I- or are you like that's the first step, man? Uh, Nobody's going to knock on your door and go, we need your gun, bro. 
How about the, how about this, Jay? How about I, I go to the range, right? I like taking pictures of the range. People people take pictures of the range. How about there's so many laws that were signed at midnight uh, against uh, gun owners, legal gun owners, yeah. that I slap a 30 round mag in my fucking gun and I start tearing off rounds and someone takes a picture, posts it on Facebook, and now the police look and go, that is an illegal. Uh, magazine today. It wasn't yesterday. It is today. And it's his problem if he doesn't know all the laws Ooh, wow, that go. So okay, now okay. they can take your guns and arrest you on a felony gun charge and you, and you will not be able to get a, a gun in security. the future. This is what they do. They're making Could laws against the people that are already paying attention to the laws. Okay. So they'll change the laws and I'll tell you what the law is. Right. And as Mr. Roma, uh, who a mob guy that used to teach uh, criminal justice in my high school... Let me tell you guys something. Ignorance for the law is no excuse. That's what it is. He wrote it on the board. Ignorance for the law is no excuse. No excuse. It's all he said. And we're like, well, what if you don't know the speed limit? He goes, ignorance for the law is no. So you're telling me like Andrew Cuomo could sign a piece of paper, 30 mags, illegal. You go to the range. You don't know it's illegal. Somebody takes your picture, puts it on Facebook. Now all of a sudden the NSA is watching you jerk off through your computer. There you go. They got their eye on you because you got the big thing. Now you'll never ha- – and they will come in and take and confiscate your guns because now you're a felony uh, with a, a gun charge on you. How do they, how do they pass that's, that without notifying the exactly, gun owner? That's exactly oh, really how they you. did it. They, they just did it. And it's your responsibility to know these laws. Where they, do you go? Yeah. Like a, and is, where do you go? like in college where you put the, the, uh, the flyers up for bands and shit. Yeah, yeah. I would love to know because I've I tried to look. Team? Fuck these. Oh, 30, <laughs> no more. Hey, no more thirty mags, you guys. Holy I've shit. I've gone to look for uh, uh, information on the the laws to see if I'm you know. Hey, I'm complying over here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to see if I'm complying to you the don't laws. Need any trouble? And no, I don't want that kind right. of trouble. But here's how it works too, because they said you can only put seven rounds in your magazine of any gun, your pistols, everything. Only seven rounds. Now you could also have what one in the one in the chamber. Eight, what if there's eight intruders? Well, ju- now you got to reload. But here, I, okay, I, under- I understand. It's like fucking, like, uh, uh, I, it's very, I think it's very unrealistic to think eight what people are coming to, load? Your, to your house. I just gave you seven loads, but, you pigs. But when I go to load my uh, 40 cal, load. Uh, I, put, I put one in the chamber and seven in the mag to comply with the law. But when I put that eighth round in and slap it in before I chamber it, I am com- committing a crime. You it, want me it, to take this part out of the podcast? It's something. No, because I you don't really do that. It. What I do is I load six in, yeah. seven, <clears throat> put it in, pop it out, then put the other you're round. Really in. living on the edge. It's I bet there's so like a moment in your mind where you're like, <laughs> "I'm a bad boy." I'm so bad. You know what? It's the principle of <laughs> no, it more than that. <laughs> it's, I but I understand, like, like Cuomo, not your cup of tea. You're pretty. You're about as far right as they go. No, because no? gay marriage. I'm fuck. I'm so right. fine with gay marriage. Abortions. I love them. I want women to get them, even when they don't want them. Just at random, hand them out. Uh, I sponsor them. Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> no, I. I am not right. I am not one of these. See, I'm anti-abortion, but right not, wing guys. Like, well, I'm, yeah, I got kids. It's kind of hard to. Well, I'm, oh, you know what? I was walking into Gelson's once, the grocery store right here. They do abortions. Though? No, oh. uh, and the kids got like his little like I like uh, outside the grocery stores where we're gonna solve all the world's problems. <laughs> yeah, like can I talk to you for a second about fracking? <laughs> it's like shouldn't you be in Congress, you dick? Yeah, like, what are you doing? All I want is a cantaloupe. Leave me alone. Like now here, <laughs> you hear you fucking brick. I'm resting. So I'm walking into uh, Gelson's holding the baby that you saw uh, on Instagram. Jay Moore Sports. You can see him doing Tracy Morgan, the world's it's biggest hilarious toddler. man. And he, uh, I'm holding him when he's like literally, like he still has shit in his eyes. He's like, <laughs> yeah. he's like baby with shit in his eyes, young. <laughs> and the guy goes, "Can I talk to you for a second about Planned Parenthood?" And I literally, like, with one arm, just kind of held him up. I guess, like, like so he was at, like out. Yeah. And I go, maybe know your audience. Yeah, maybe there's no. Here. Of, no, there's maybe like a whole bunch of you know, I'm holding a non-aborted hey, item. Yeah. <laughs> like maybe the people behind me that are not holding life. <laughs> Uh, I'm, what anti, it, I'm anti-abortion because uh, it seems to be a form of contraception with the kids. Mm. Like, well, if I get pregnant, I'll just abort it. Is it really? It's like, how about I, this? I, how about don't let guys you kind of know come inside of you? That's true. Uh, but but is it being used like that? Is it or is it? 
kind I of. Know. I just thought it'd be a good conversation. I don't know. I think you're right, though. <laughs> I think it is, though. Yeah, of course it's it is. It's more like, hey, it's oops, an option. Oops. If it if I have an accident, it's totally. Yeah. It it sounds like we're being flippant. And but why is the reasoning any issue for you? Like, if why people get an abortion? Why should it matter? I, look, I'll tell you this. I'm not one of these guys that like once the sperm hits the egg, like it's life. I, mm. I believe it's goo. <laughs> go, go! Look at oh, you. I'm shooting ropes. A go. Will you do Damone talking about the abortion for me, <laughs> please? Yeah, we'll get one of those abortions. My brother got one for his girl once. Where do you get it, huh? <laughs> um, I uh, the yeah, dream like, police. Da 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 da. <laughs> I'm telling you, I got two tickets in the load. You'll be able to see the top of the band's head. I wanted to go to his his dumb espresso place, but I hear it closed. <laughs> yeah, fucking, <laughs> the moment was up and running. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I'm against I'm against it because uh, I, I think it speaks to the greater consciousness of a community hmm. where it's an option in case shit goes wrong. I can abort this. Yeah. And it, for me, it's not being a Catholic. It's not like, Hey man, you're killing a fucking human being. Uh, because I, I think it's, it's goo in the first, if you uh -huh. catch it super early when most people do it, I, I, that's, that's my thing. It's goo. Yeah. But I also don't think, uh, it's particularly ethical for all parties involved. Like, like if I, if I had a baby, if my wife was pregnant and I found out like the baby had like Down syndrome, mm -hmm. they, they'll say like, do you want to, because they can find it so early. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would still have the baby because that's the fucking, you, you, hey man, you're sitting at the poker table. These are your fucking cards. You don't get to go, do them wow. again. Do them again. That's interesting. Give me another I, card, I, you fucking yeah, prick. Another card. Give me another one. Oh, look at this butte. <laughs> Give me a marker. What the fuck are you smiling at, you fucking prick? But I'm anti-death penalty too because I don't give a shit about, uh, I, if they killed it, if they walked from the courtroom, as Chris Rock said, a stabbing chair don't cost nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. That's hilarious, man. He goes, a stabbing chair. <laughs> a stabbing chair. But like, Damien Eccles was on the podcast. Yeah. And he was on death row for 18 years and 17 right, right. days. Like, that's not death row. That's a live row. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the opposite of death row. Aren't there cases, though, that are a little more sl slam dunks than that case? Yeah, Texas. Which, <laughs> every case in Texas. You put them on old Sparky. That's it. So, like, if you went from the courthouse and then they fried you, like, within, like, a year because you raped kids and then stabbed their mom and you kidnapped them, yeah. it, like, I'd go, fuck it, bye. Like, because I don't yeah. see a place for you in society. But because there's unlimited appeals. Yeah. Unlike uh, life LWAP, life without parole. Yes. That's how Wayne Kramer said it from the MC5 the whole time. Dude, he that's he pretty goes, good. You know, when you're doing LWAP, and I was like, LWAP. What does LWAP mean? I'm not Italian. Why does he keep without calling me parole. that? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So you're pro death penalty. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, but I, I, I but mean, I'm only pro, like, then fucking, then kill them. Then kill them. Yeah, I, I, I agree with years. that. It I, turns out the guy was innocent. I know, and then it turns so, out. But you know well, what? Whoopsie. Wait, hey, what are you going to do? <laughs> I, I don't Accidents like the... Accidents happen every day, Anthony. I don't like the, the whole thing where uh, it's, it's one way or that's it. You know, it's like, all right, abortion. I'm against abortion. For this case or that I'm just against it. It's like... Really, the, the the woman's raped and she gets Boy, pregnant. She be the, able to have like abortion. so, there's all these different variables that that people just don't even want to consider. And the death penalty, I think, comes into play because there are certain cases that are this motherfucker did this. It's absolutely one hundred percent. And when he did it's it. children, there's, you can't reform somebody. No, no. Here's the other thing with abortion too, is. Uh, I'm against abortion. $125 at the free clinic. <laughs> Thank you, Damone. <laughs> Fucking Anthony's Damone makes me so happy. Like, you you kid, uh, I'm against abortion, but the only people that vote on it are billionaire white guys. Yeah, that's true. So sure. I would always vote pro-abortion until there's enough women in the halls of the Senate to go, that's how I fucking feel. Yeah. So well, it doesn't always come down to the Supreme like I, Court, though. Huh? 
Doesn't it come down to the Supreme Court, though? Yeah, there's like when, two chicks really? in the Supreme there's Court. There's chicks. But they all dress I even like, think there's a colored guy. They dress <laughs> like chicks with their robes, right? <laughs> they got their balls out. <laughs> guilty, not guilty uh, with the fucking ruling on. <laughs> look at Florida. Shaped like a fucking dick, right? Um, <laughs> so... What were we just talking about? It was the fact that uh, I, 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 the, more women. I think more. Yeah, more women, women have to. Should, and I'm not a feminist or anything. I'm a human. Be- I like. I, I just think I'm common senseist. Mm-hmm. I think there should be way. Look, anytime you see the news, you see like Mitch McConnell, you see Reed, you see all these fucking guys. It's the same Nancy Pelosi. Like it's the same people. <laughs> yeah. Like when I moved to California, it was Barbara Boxer, mm-hmm. and who's the other lady? Fuck. It was Barbara Boxer and another lady. Uh-huh. They were the U.S. Uh, senators. Yeah. And California's all fucked up. They're, get, it's them. It's still them. <laughs> it's still I've been here them. since 1993. How is you it have, still the same people? Because uh, you have to be a billion, a billion. You have to be a multi, 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 multi millionaire to get your name on the yeah. two party ballot. I went to vote at Palisades High School and it was Republican or Democrat. And I go, Hold on a minute. There's people I want to vote for that are. Yeah, like, but you don't want to vote for that. That's like, no, I that's do. That's pretty much. I had the uh, Diane Feinstein. The oh, Feinstein. She's like a crazy lady. Ooh, yeah, she is. Crazy. In my opinion, yeah. allegedly, they're both fucking crazy ladies. Anybody in Senate is fucking crazy. <laughs> so, but they, when I moved here, that's who were the senators, mm-hmm. and nothing's changed. Nothing. I would be, I would be governor of California because you said New York. Yeah. You know why? There's so much. You could pick a thing. And just do it for four years. Like, cleanest oceans what? in the history of the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, like, f- farms fucking irrigate all, like, Fresno Bay. And that like, would be your cause, and you'd be fucking, great. You know, he would I'm love gonna it. I'm going to fix every fucking pothole in Tampa yeah, yeah. Bay. And then in four years, one-third of all Californians will go, best governor we ever had. <laughs> that guy's amazing. The guy, you know how much fucking water that put into the Central Valley? <laughs> cleanest beaches in the world, huh? Good point. Imagine being governor like New Jersey. Yeah. Uh, Ugh. He got a lot of. He gets a lot of ink, though. He really does. I Christy. thought it was funny when he diverted the traffic into Fort Lee. Oh yeah, and yeah, he yeah. Sent out a tweet of when Chris Christie. So, I think it was was it Fort Lee. Uh yeah, it was right right over the bridge. Right? Somebody in Fort Lee voted against something. I'm completely broad stroking this. Basically, he wanted something and Fort Lee like held it up. So like he waited a year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then closed the uh, the George Washington Bridge upper level and rerouted all of the traffic through Fort Lee to go all the way back. Yeah, there. yeah. So Fort Lee was it, just a fucking mess it was for the like Fort, two days. The guy from Fort Lee didn't endorse Christie for governor. Right. So that's what he was pissed at. But he did wait like a year. And then, uh, uh, yeah, but, but there also is zero evidence, physical evidence, that he had anything to do with that, Christie. But I, it's such yeah. a good, but it, like people that he had known for years and had hired as aides for him and stuff, they knew that it, it was going down and happened. Wouldn't plausible deniability. But isn't that what you want your governor doing for a laugh? What, for a laugh. <laughs> like if you can't reroute traffic and go watch what I do to Fort Lee. It's today. hilarious. It's fucking watch. It's You're going to love mess. this. Just let, make sure the ambulances get where they need to go. But wait, do you see this shit? That scumbag didn't endorse me. Watch this. Watch, watch. this. I can't pick my kid up at school. Trap. Like I know. G- like a game of Sim City. He's playing with real Sim people. City. He's playing with real people. Let me see what happens if I close this. And ooh, look at all the red exclamation points over people's heads. They're mad. Fuck. It's so fun. <laughs> Coming full circle. First time I ever heard about the video game Sims was on Opie and Anthony. Oh, we're, God, right? But we we're talking about the Anthony Cumia show. Yeah. Oh, thank you. For basically what Sarah McLaughlin asked you to pay to get that for, dog with runny eyes. Yeah, the poor dog. Poor Although they dog. look pretty good. Why don't you go show that dog to a homeless veteran wearing a Carl Malone Lakers jersey and let him know you're doing God's work? Yeah. <laughs> fucking help the people, you Canadian cunt. Are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> She's got a $3,000 golden retriever in her lap in the commercial. I got to take Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> Dog's got one eye. <laughs> Won't you help save one of these precious animals? No. I got little teacup puppies in my house. Ah. 
My dogs weigh two pounds. The most healthy, happy dog can look miserable in slow motion, too. <laughs> like, all they got to do is, is do that thing with the one eyebrow, and then, and then they, it changes to the other eyebrow going up, and they turn their head in slow motion. It's like, this poor thing. You feel so bad Sarah for Sarah McLaughlin it. music over. Yeah, yeah. Take that same picture of dogs, play fucking Foo Fighters. One by one, I've been right. looking for some. You'd be like, fuck, these dogs are awesome. Vicious. You'd probably move more dogs. <laughs> you might. I don't want that depressing Sarah McLaughlin song, dog. Move more dog. Might move more product. Chains Addiction, Mountain Song. Like, oh, <laughs> what kind of dog is that? <laughs> uh, Anthony Cumia show is uh, every day. Every day. Well, it's Monday through Thursday. I decided to take. Off, I took like the stern. I took the stern route, Ooh. and uh, took Fridays off. Uh, hey, Anthony Cumia has his own podcast. Mark Grace, there's a shot. It'll be <laughs> out of here. Shortstop Raphael Santana catches it. It's live Monday through Thursday from 4 p to 7 p Eastern Time, right Bye. here from City Field. Bob Murphy. <laughs> you know, JFK was killed in Dallas, Texas. I never enjoyed Dallas. Too high. From the Book Suppository Building, apparently. <laughs> Governor Connolly, they call it the magic bullet. I bet Governor Connolly doesn't call it that at all. <laughs> he probably calls it the unlucky bullet. Hit him three times. The motorcade taking a timeout as the governor picks up his hat. (laughs) 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 Oh, oh, fuck. God damn. Uh, I love it. Anthony Cumia show. Get it. It's worth the money. You know, Connolly fucking. Nixon was going to make him vice president. Was he really? Yeah. Mm. Because he was so obsessed with Kennedy. That he, Just to have the guy that was in the fucking car. That was the last That's piece crazy. on the chessboard. And then the whole, everybody at the White House, Connolly just kept coming by. And he was going to dump his VP and wow. run again with, uh, the second time he was going to run with Connolly. Wow. He was going to dump, Ag- what was it, Agnew? Yeah, yeah. Spiro Agnew, who wound up having crook. some problems. You know, he had some, he didn't even try to say, I am not a crook. He was like, yeah, I'm out. You I know what? I should just get out of here. Just leave. You guys have a back door? Yeah. <laughs> no, he was gonna go. He was gonna run with Connolly because Connolly. He was so obsessed with the Kennedys that Connolly was a piece of Camelot. Mm-hmm. And so for him, it was the all time like fuck you, game over. Right. I win. You were in the car when the president got shot. Yeah. Now he's my VP. And then they uh, unfortunately talked him out of it. And then the uh, you know what? And then Spiro Agnew has to resign. They get friggin' uh, Gerald Ford as vice president. Nixon has to resign, and Gerald Ford is now president. And Gerald Ford on the Warren Commission. Uh, Gerald Ford and Nelson Rockefeller was his vice president. Mm-hmm. Hey, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. First time in American history, only time president, vice president, neither one were elected. Not even elected. Not even fucking elected. So you take what that's worth and tell me if we don't have a conspiracy problem. All Jesse right. Ventura. I Jesse. Mean, can you get him on your show? To talk uh, about I would love to. I would love to get him down uh, to the show. It would be great. He had that problem with Jimmy Norton, uh, and uh, oh boy, he got into That's it. on YouTube. You it's can look it so up. good. Oh, when my, Jimmy my, calls him Riff Raff, and then <laughs> he's like, he pats him on the shoulder real hard because Jimmy's a little guy. I mean, yeah. he's like, thank you for your service. Like, oh, I get it. And Jimmy's like, I get it. I wasn't in the, the service. I wasn't in the army. Yeah. So I, I can't even talk about it then, I guess. And Jesse's just shaking. <laughs> My favorite great. all-time moment, more than gay Marco. Oh, that was a biggie. Was when I called you guys out of nowhere and I challenged the Iron Sheik to a fight. And he pissed his pants. <laughs> and he pissed his pants. That's on YouTube. Jay Moore, Iron Sheik, <laughs> Opie, and it's Anthony. a good one. And Bill Burr's in the studio is a full house. Yeah. And Jim Jeffries in the studio. And they're just, and he goes, fuck you. Fuck you. Make you suck my cock. I give you, every, I put you camel clutch. I degrade you. You. Yeah. Every insult the Iron Sheik has is him sucking your, like he gets all like, I'll suck your fucking big dick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He gets a little confused. <laughs> yeah. I will let you ram me in the ass. <laughs> You want to uh, fuck me? Come on, fuck me. Go what? ahead. I don't give a fuck. Champ that? one. I'm WWF champ one. Champ one. <laughs> Greatest city in the world. Madison Square Garden. Come from Tehran, Iran. Greco-Roman wrestle. Champ one. 
So sad. But he's Iranian for real. Yeah. Is he? Yeah, he came from Tehran. Like Chief J. Strongbow, when I found out he was an Italian named Joe Scarpa from Philly, a piece of me died. <laughs> that is bad, right? What happened? But he's an Indian. You know, he walked through his like gremlin every night, and they're like, hey, Joe, what are you going to go put on the Indian outfit tonight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? Hey, go f- where, where's hey, Jules? Go fuck yourself. Hey, <laughs> Just, yeah. Look at little Joe Scarpa going to play Indian at the garden tonight. Oh, See shit. you later, Joe. Have fun. I dressed me in. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right. Kumia uh, Show. Uh, what's the best way for people yeah. to subscribe to it? AnthonyKumia.com. You could check it out. Uh, and, uh, yeah, subscribe Monday through Friday. Uh, Monday through Thursday, <laughs> 4 to 7 uh, it's 4 to 6 p.m. You do best Look at of? me. I'm like, I don't know my, my own show. Uh, Friday, we put up, uh, yeah, we do a, a little best of clip thing uh, from the week. All right. So they get yeah. a Friday. Thing. They get a Friday yeah. thing. They get the thing. It's just a lot of fun. It's it's uh, really completely uncensored. And uh, we do anything. Like we were talking the other day about the, the squirting. See, and that's in the news now. The, I think squirting women that squirt, oh, it's yeah. bullshit. I think it's urine. I don't give a shit what anyone says. I know there is a female orgasm, and I know I've never seen one, but <laughs> but hey. uh, I know there is some type of um, uh, secretion, let's say. But it ain't this sprinkle ahead at the golf course going off like I see when they're Wah! you know. <laughs> it so it you just doesn't woman, happen. You think when a woman squirts that she's peeing? It's urine. Plain and simple. Even though every doctor on earth goes, no, it's actually not urine. I have heard doctors say that some part of it is a secretion, but most of it is indeed urine. And these re- reports just Bennington came out say, last week. As Ron Bennington would say, urine. urine yeah. I think urine. it's just urine. Urine. But, but we're going to have a girl come on. And this is stuff we can do in the privacy of my own home. A girl's going to come on. We're going to lay down the old tarp. Danny. Let her go at it <laughs> and and just r- let go. And then we are going to take this. Dr. Steve is going to help us yes. examine it. Tennessee's and own. we are going to find out if this is indeed just what I think it is. You're He's in. a good dude, too, hey, man. Dr. Steve is great. Uh, so Very you're handy. Going, when is this episode around? We're, uh, we're still uh, getting the girl, right? We got, we got Lainey helping us out. Yeah. You ever see Lainey? She used to bring all the girls down to uh, the girl show. Lines, She's man. Crazy. Oh, fuck, is that? Oh, that's right. I don't well, you fucking know about these chicks. <laughs> you're, you're hooked up. You could be the lady could be all squirting right. in this garage. I'd be like, does that need a plug? <laughs> what is that? What is that? Get what the mop. What is that? What Jesus. is she doing? It's a disgrace. Dice to dice now. <laughs> on the way out. Then you come me a show, right? I I don't believe the squader. I had a panic attack. All I wanted was orange juice. <laughs> I needed juice. <laughs> Remember that. I remember. I, I remember. was feeling bad. I what needed about juice. 